You're watching DIY Nate. If you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing. Don't forget to tell me about your project in the comments. Hello friends, today on DIY Nate, I am actually going back to the project that started it all, my ice maker repair. And in that video, I didn't really do a good job showing how to replace the water valve, which is actually this, the water inlet valve that is in the back of this refrigerator, but on the inside, right back there. And so I'm gonna take the time today to show you how to do this right. We're gonna replace the water inlet valve. We've got some problems that our ice maker is showing us, and we're pretty sure this is the fix. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in, and get our ice maker back up and running. So with that, a couple key things to know about this ice maker. One, the refrigerator I'm working on a Maytag is an MFI 2665XEM7, in case you're wondering and you are trying to match model for model. On the other side of that is, this is the ice maker I've got here. I just push in right here and I pull out. And one of the tricks on knowing whether or not you've got something going on with your ice maker or if it's the water inlet valve, one of the tricks I've found is reaching in there and seeing if you can feel if there's actually water in the ice maker. So I'm putting my fingers up here and I'm trying to feel whether or not there's actually water inside the ice maker. In my case right now, there is not water in there. Now, one of the tricks I use is you can actually put water in the ice maker using a syringe, a baster, or you can actually take the ice maker all the way out and put some water in there. If it dumps the ice out, then you know the issue isn't so much the ice maker. The other trick you can use is you can jump it. And this is a small piece of wire here, and you can go between typically the T and the H terminal, and you can put that in there. I wouldn't recommend doing that unless you really know what you're doing with these things. So that's just kind of a side note. But I know I've already gone through the diagnosing steps. I know my ice maker would produce ice if it was getting water. So I'm pretty sure that leads me down the path of replacing the water inlet valve. This water inlet valve here, I ordered this off Amazon. It's made by Uline. I think the company that produces Robert Shaw is the company that's selling it. I'll leave a link in the video description if you want this particular model. You probably want to check though and make sure your fridge uses this one. When I look at the description on it, it's a K77623-AN is what they've listed on here. So who knows if that's the same model for you, but I'm going to swap this out and replace it. Let's get to it. Okay, the first step is a bit of a hassle. I got to get all of this stuff out of my fridge, which is a real big pain. So we're going to do that fast forward motion you'll see what I'm working on here then I'm going to shut the water off turn the power off take the filter out pull out the back panel and then we're going to pop in this water filter and exchange the tubes and then we'll hook everything up we'll make sure we got water pressure coming out of the front and then we'll hook our ice maker up and it'll be up and running again Okay, to get to the place where I needed to get, I do have to remove this bottom shelf, which is unfortunate because there's a lot of work to get to it. So we're gonna go ahead and take this bottom shelf out. A chance to clean out your fridge while you're doing this. Probably something you haven't cleaned in a long time, so might as well wipe it down, wash it out. I know my wife has appreciated in the past when I've had to do something like this, but uh, it's kind of like you get a fresh look to the fridge, so you might as well clean it while you're at it. Right now, we're just pulling out the pieces so we can get to the actual work that needs to be done. We're gonna go ahead and pop this. And we got one more shelf to go. And last but not least, this shelf's got a nice buildup of goo on it, so we're definitely gonna get a benefit of cleaning this guy off too. Let's see here. Take that shelf out. You can see we got some kind of honey syrup or something on there, so we'll get that a nice clean up as well. And now we're into the meat of the project. So our next step, we're gonna turn the power off, shut the water off, we're gonna take the water filter out, and then we're gonna pop the rest of the stuff open. And we'll get into it and knock that out. All right, so we're powering it off. I'm going to slide the fringe out. If you're super novice and not sure where this stuff is, typically behind your fridge, you got the shut off valve. I'll we'll reach back there, make sure I turn the water all the way off. Right, turn the power off. Do this. We're back in action. Just slide that back. So now we're ready to go ahead and open the fridge up. Don't have great lights here for you, but you can see first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this down and go ahead and hit disconnect my water filter counterclockwise. It's right way to turn for the water filter to come off. You get a little water runoff with that. So I'm just gonna set that in my sink, let that drain out a bit. Now the next step is really gonna be opening up these sides just a little bit. I believe what we do is a bit of a technique to this and get it off. I'm gonna try and take this uh, pin here, and really it's just a matter of getting yourself a little bit of access. Um, there is a pin that runs across the top there, and once you pull it off, 
it separates. Um, the reality is you can see these little plastic rivets. You just pull far enough that it spreads over and pops out of there. So you've got that one off. Next, you're gonna come down and remove these panels. I'm really gonna put a little top pressure on each of these panels. These two panels are a little tricky. You're gonna wanna put some pressure on them, push them down. Um, they, don't, they don't just come off like you would expect. Not quite that easy to pop out of there. So you might have to work with them a little bit, but uh, once you get them moved a little bit, but be careful not to break them. Each one of these is fastened in there. There goes one of them. This one should separate in just a second here. Got those two guys off. We just need to get the top ones. So now we're just going to take our screwdriver and you might have to go inward a little bit or down until you hear it pop. And a nice clean pop there. And so this one, we're going to try and do something similar. There we go. And from here, you're going to pull these down, push down on them. And they should pop out. It's a little bit, takes a little bit of work to get that open. Once you got that piece out, you're now ready for this part. And typically this part is just gonna separate a little bit. They've got some pins in here as well that are kind of holding things in place. You might have to force it just a little bit, but you wanna be careful not to break anything. I'm gonna lift up on it. And then I've got access to this. So let's get into this part and see if we can get that replaced. For starters, we're simply going to unlatch the plastic tubing here. We've got all these tubes that are connected. We've got our solenoids here that are connected. You can see green on bottom, brown on top. And so we're gonna go ahead and take this guy and separate the white tubing here and make sure we can get that one out of the range. And then the plastic clear tubing there. We've got this other tubing right here that also is kind of wedged in there. We're gonna separate that. And now our whole contraption is out there. Now at this point, we're into the easier part where you simply need to pull, push in and pull out. So that white tube is on bottom. So we're gonna go ahead and pull that one out. And it's a good idea maybe to get a towel as well here. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that before I open it up. You're gonna see me go ahead and pull this bottom piece separate, separated from the uh, the water valve. Ideally, I can just get that to come out of there. I've got it in there pretty good, a little too hard there. Be careful not to break anything. And you can hear some water coming out of the front actually. So that pressure will leave that. And there's some water coming out of the, the second valve there. And last but not least, separate this guy and then we'll be onto the solenoid and be careful not to get water all over your solenoid items ah, making me work for it today let's see i'm probably going to go ahead and separate this solenoid down here pull that off and make sure you're unplugged at this point yeah, well, be careful we don't jerk it make sure solenoid is pulled there's also a piece here that you can open up with a screwdriver, I believe. Notice how this metal piece is grounding the wire, I believe, on the front. We'll do that in just a second. I'm getting my screwdriver in here to help me separate that piece there. I would like to get that last water valve out of there. Okay, and sometimes it gets on there pretty good and you really have to fight it to get it off, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, it does not want to play ball with me, so we might have to use a screwdriver to separate it more. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna actually take this part off before I'm gonna use my flat blade, get up in here, see if I can get that clip off of there. Maybe if I can disconnect the cords, I'll feel a little more comfortable. Okay, so I've taken off the plastic front housing on that, this little protector area. We're gonna go ahead and take this back piece off and put that back in play in a minute here. Next, we're gonna take this solenoid and just separate that with our flat blade. Get him right off of there, he pops off, and we're also going to separate the, the ground wire there. Use a flat plate again to push that off its mark. There we go, and all pieces are separated now. So, if I have to give it a little pressure, I guess I can. Okay, so what it took was using a little bit of leverage with my needle nose pliers and pushing from the top since it was on there pretty good. So hopefully you don't run into that problem. Usually it goes on much easier, but that one certainly gave me a hard time. So now we're ready to get back into the install side. Got a broken, bad version of that out. Now we're gonna follow it up by putting on a good version here. So the first piece we're gonna go with is our challenging insert. And there we go. You see how easy that one went in? A little different there. Uh, I don't know if that was part of the problem, but certainly didn't help. And we're going in with that. I'm doing my water lines first just because I know the electrical piece is not too difficult and uh, it goes on pretty straightforward. Let me go ahead and take this top one, set them on nicely 
here. Okay, now back for the electrical. We wanna make sure we get our sides lined up correctly and that they've got a good connection there. Should we get that guy nice, nice and neat? Should go on pretty nicely there. Easy does it. Come back with our brown wire and save the green for the end here. The brown connection is gonna go on nice and right here. It makes a nice connection there. But we're gonna come back with our protector here. Slide that over top right there. Fits in nicely. Come back with this piece. Pop this guy on top. There we go. This piece just fits on top. So now our electrical is well in place. Everything is lined up. And last but not least, we're going to put our ground on there. The ground wire should go very nicely right there. It's right on. So we are now back to normal. And now it's just a matter of putting the pieces together. Here, our white, white cord and our valve. All this stuff should fit nicely in here. Now right? we push it in until we hear the snaps. I feel like I have not snapped on something quite right there. Uh, there we go. Something's holding it back. And fitting in there nicely. There we go. Clamps in place, so now we're good. And we will just make sure everything is doing what it needs to do. And so we are good to go. We will put it back together. Now that some of the easier replacement pieces, we're going to go ahead and put our water filter back in. We're just going to take this. We're going to go clockwise. Just turn it right there. Put the filter back in place. Next up, let's power it on and see how it does. I'm not afraid to out. second or two. So we'll run that water, make sure we got a good flow of water coming. Pretty strong flow. You want to do that, make sure it gives your ice maker a chance that the, once you run it a little bit, let it pump through, you should be in really good shape. I feel like we got a good stream of water going here. maker back together here so I'm gonna chuck the old one right here this is what it looks like if you want it up close and personal on it from Robert Shaw I ordered it online I guess it's one of the manufacturers that sells through Amazon but if you need that similar repair I will say my first time ever doing this I replaced the ice maker I replaced the valve in the back which is actually doesn't really play if you're getting water through this one of the key signals to me was the fact that I can get water here, but wasn't getting water through the ice maker. So that kind of told me there was something going on. It seemed like something was bad in the water valve. It's not the only issue you can have. You definitely can have a bad ice maker. If the ice maker is getting water, that's great. It's most likely your ice maker. If it's not getting water and your ice maker works when you fill it with water, it's probably something like the water inlet valve. So kind of a good rule of thumb to figure out. If you can diagnose that, then you'll know which parts you're going down and it'll keep you from doing the wrong repair and finding out you need to go back the other way. So hopefully you're able to get through this fairly quickly. Hope your uh, ice maker works better than mine has over the past few years. Now let's put it all back together. Get all the parts and pieces back in place, and now we're gonna test it. Moment of truth. We've got it. And just like that, we've got a fresh set of ice. With that, if you have a problem with your Maytag MFI 2665 XEM, possibly seven model, 
there are a couple ways to handle it. The water inlet valve is one, the ice maker is another. Uh, there are some other tests and tricks you can run. The water filter, obviously, something you want to check as well. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you're going through it, I know what it's like to be without ice. Man, it's not fun. So hope you get it fixed. Have a great day. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks.